the autonomous ninja 5 has issues firmware updates do only so much to fix the problem but there are additional issues that we need to address i'm hoping that today we can address some of those issues although one of the issues that we like to fix right now is the allergy season because this allergy is killing me today today is bad mm. my eyes i don't know if you can see it but this eye here it's messed up big time i can hardly hardly keep it open so let's try to fix it ninja All right, so I have some notes here of the things I want to address. One of the issues that some of you guys may have is audio. The Nikon Z6 has issues with audio being captured and the ground noise uh, levels are quite high when it comes to the amps. To eliminate that, we wanna capture audio on the Ninja. If you have a microphone that requires phantom power, unfortunately, that's not gonna work. If it doesn't, and you have a microphone that doesn't require phantom power, but it's self power on its own, then that will work. The other go around to that is like, if you have a DD like I do here, then I recommend you using a wireless transmitter. The wireless transmitter will eliminate that issue 100%. You can still capture some really great audio that you're used to with a shotgun or any other microphone that you may have and take it directly onto the Ninja. So if you want to bypass that issue of phantom power, I do recommend you guys get a wireless transmitter. Although this is probably gonna set you back a good uh, $250 or so, or $200 at least, depending on which brand you buy. That's the only solution I have, unfortunately, but it is a solution nonetheless. All right, so let me get to the next one. One of the major issues with the Ninja lately is the fact that the Ninja, when it first came out, it only addressed 4K capturing of ProRes RAW and ProRes and DNX HR. 4K was the limit when it came out almost two years ago. And that was not a big deal really because the amount of data they required to process per second wasn't that large. Automus has been pushing to capture higher frame rates and even higher quality video. And that is the acquisition of 5.7K, 6K and whatnot, maybe 60 frames per second, even 120 frames per second for that matter. And I know some cameras can do it. The problem is that most of the SSDs and all the ones that are being listed on the Automus website are really more like optimized for 4K up to 30 frames per second. What I'm trying to get at is the fact that those drives have limits. And some of you guys have reached out to me saying, Ed, those fixes do not work. And it's true, they don't work. And that's because those limits have been reached already and they were good for those limits alone only. The Nikon Z6 can only capture 4K 30p at the best. So for me to capture and recommend something that can capture even higher frame rates and even higher quality of uh, video like 6K, I cannot test that since I do not have a camera that can actually export that kind of video quality. I've been doing my research and the best one I can think of and like I've come up with based on the math and everything that for you guys to try, it's based upon how well it can, it can communicate, how good is the transfer rate and the architecture that's behind the drive. So QLC, which is stands for quadruple layer cells, stay away from those SSD uh, drives, even though they've gotten better now because they become 3D technology, stay away from those. TLC, which is triple layer, is perhaps a little better and I believe that's what the Western Digital Drives are. Although from uh, what I'm seeing, I think that's reaches potential already and that's it. Then we have MLC Drives and SLC Drives, which are single layer cells and multi-layer cells. So we're gonna go with multi-layer cells for this purpose. They're gonna be a little more expensive, but they're gonna be more reliable and they can write better. So the reason why I'm bringing up this technology issue is because we have the issue in the Ninja 5 where you drop frames and that's called Skippy. When you get that kangaroo on the corner, it's a little tri a yellow triangle and whatnot. It means that you have dropped a frame or so. Most of the time, if it keeps on happening, something's about to go wrong. So you may want to actually stop and see what the issue is. It could be your HDMI cable. It could be the SSD drive that you're using. It could be the camera. It could be the, the Ninja. Nonetheless, the one solution that I can tell you right now to start with that does not require you to send your Ninja back home, which means back to Artemis, is a Samsung 860 Pro. You want to go with an MLC technology type of drive to capture anything larger than 4K 30p. The same goes for 1080 when you go beyond 60 frames per second because then you start surpassing what the data rate of 4K 30p is. So if you're going beyond 60 in ProRes Rod in HD, 
then that's also an issue that you may encounter. If this issue keeps on occurring, talk to Automus. It will probably require you to send the Ninja to them. In most cases, what I heard from you guys is that Automus has actually changed the motherboard within because there was actual problems in the actual Ninja. So if everything has failed and you cannot capture proper footage on the Ninja, talk to Automus, and that will probably solve the problem 100%. All the solutions I'm finding, I'm passing on to you guys. And this is the solutions I'm finding out when it comes to Skippy on the Ninja 5. Hopefully that helps. So the third issue that I'm going to talk about is uh, raw video noise. So ProRes raw, it's inherently noisy if you do not know what it is you're doing. I have been whining and complaining about that for the longest time about the fact that ProRes raw and any raw footage coming out of the Nikon Z6 is noisy. You're not going to be able to get rid of most of it. And if you do, it's going to require a lot of processing. There's one rule that you have to follow when capturing ProRes RAW. And that is to expose for your subject. And two, to make sure that you're not clipping your blacks. Noise tends to be very, very intense in those dark areas. So if you have underexposed that area, you will have noise there. And that's where it's going to be showing the most. When you are recording on the Ninja 5, you have PQ, HLG, 709 and LUT. You'll realize that most of the time your footage is a lot darker than you capture it. Even if you, even though you captured using uh, 709 and everything looked good, even though you capture in PQ and everything looked good, you still have an issue because you do not know how the LUT is going to work. What I recommend is that you actually use the LUT, use it as a guide, and just your guide at the beginning to see what's what's too dark. If it's too dark, Increase your exposure so you can get better footage out of that. Once you do so, your footage will be a lot easier to control in Premiere. The other portion of that is if you're shooting people is to make sure that their skin tones are nowhere beyond pink or salmon. I have said this in the past, get a little fishy in there and then you'll be fine. So if you have some salmon tones in your skin, you're just fine. If you get to the yellows, you're pushing it too much. So just a little yellow perhaps, that's as far as I would go and those are the highlights. So if you see highlights and those are uh, peaking at yellow, then you have you are just about at the cusp where you should like not go beyond. So make sure that that's happening. So if, you're, if your subject is uh, on that level for your, the skins and everything else in the background is still way too dark, you need to bring some light in. You're going to have a lot of noise in your background and you do not want to have that noise unless it is intentional. But if not, need video, which is going to cost you at least a hundred bucks. If you want to uh, take care of 4K footage, it's going to cost you $200. If you want Red Giants, Red Bullet, it's going to be a lot more expensive. That's a subscription. The third solution to this, DaVinci Resolve 17 that just came out or will come out soon. It has noise reducer within and that noise reducer within is real nice. It works uh, almost flawlessly and I would highly recommend that one. Now that one's going to run you $300. But it's worth it because it gives you also an NLE. You pay 300 bucks and you're set for life, basically. Uh, hopefully it remains like that, but I'm not sure. Nonetheless, that's a real good one that to use. You do your whole editing in Premiere. You export it in ProRes 422. Take it to uh, Resolve, apply the noise reducer, and then export it to the codec you want. And then you can just give it to your client, take it to YouTube or whatnot. But that will be the go around to solve that noise issue. Now, it's like I said, it's very redundant, but that's the only way to tackle it. If you're capturing Blackmagic RAW, a VA12 is what's required, and then you can use it that natively in Resolve. The Ninja requires you to use a native NLE as well. That native NLE is from Apple. Final Cut Pro also has noise reduction, but the noise reduction within Final Cut Pro, eh, it's just average, you know? It's not as good as the one from Resolve. As long as you capture your blacks perfect, you do not need to worry about noise as much. It's gonna be there, but it's not gonna look as bad as you thought it did. In fact, it's gonna make your video that much better. That's my solution to capturing noise. Live with it or pay for the solution. I'm sorry, that's as best as I got for that one. And finally, the last update or firmware update that there is right now that just came out is firmware 10.62. 10.61 came out last week. I'm guessing there was some kind of issue with that and the fact that apparently it was lacking RGB parades and vector scopes. I do not see that problem. I'm using 6.1 right now, and I will update in the process of this to 6.2. But in ProRes RAW, there's no issues when it comes to the RGB parades or the vector scopes uh, right now. So if you guys are having that issue, it may be 
because it is specific to your camera, but with the Nikon Z6, there isn't. What's 0.62 going to address? It will address the issue that the Nikon Z6 has, and that firmware update is going to be uh, firmware 10.10, 10.12, I believe, and that will be released Thursday at midnight. And when that firmware update comes out, it will address Blackmagic RAW, ProRes RAW, the focus on the Z6 II. So there's going to be some major upgrades when it comes to the second generation of the Z-Line system for the Z6 and the Z, uh, Z7. It will not make it better when it comes to video if you're a Z6 uh, or Z7 um, user right now. So if you have the first generation, unfortunately that update is not going to fix the issue that you have that you want to capture higher frame rates 4k 60p regardless of what upgrades are coming out it will not give you the ability to capture raw video onto the ninja or the video assist 12g as you guys know when you're shooting 120 frames per second it only happens in hd and you can only capture that internally well 6k will become available on the nikon z6 II, but it will only be internally at 8-bit so for the first generation of the Nikon Z6 and Z7, it's exactly the same thing. The ability to capture better quality video externally, it's exactly the same. You'll cap the 4K 30p regardless whether you have the first generation or the second generation. And if you don't recall, for you to capture raw video, regardless whether it be ProRes RAW or Blackmagic RAW, you still need to ship your camera into Nikon to get that update. And that update or that upgrade will cost you $200 plus shipping costs. So you're looking at about $300. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.